Hello everyone and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe and today we're going to be recapping Taylor Swift's two last shows in Liverpool, the surprise songs that she performed, one of which was incredibly shocking. I honestly, my jaw dropped when I heard that she performed it. We're also going to be talking about Joe Alwyn breaking his silence on his breakup from Taylor Swift, really the first time he's ever talked about their relationship publicly and specifically their breakup publicly and also kind of what we could maybe expect from Taylor Swift in the next couple of weeks, what friends may be joining her on this uh, European tour and just kind of what else she might be up to in the next couple of weeks. So let's start out with recapping her last two shows in Liverpool. If you missed it last week, we talked about her 100th show, which was her first night in Liverpool. Obviously, a lot of us thought something was going to be announced on that 100th show evening. Nothing was announced, but we did find, we did get confirmation that the tour is officially ending in December, which I think we all kind of knew, but wasn't officially confirmed. Now we know. But let's talk about her final two shows in Liverpool. Starting off with the second night, where she performed a mashup of This Is What You Came For and Gold Rush. Now, if you don't know the song, if you're like, hmm, This Is What You Came For, that's not a Taylor Swift song, you'd be correct, kind of. So for those who maybe weren't around back in 2016, 2015, I'm not even sure exactly when this song came out, maybe 2015. Um, This is a Calvin Harris song. Calvin Harris, one of Taylor Swift's ex-boyfriends who she dated again, like 2014, 2015. Um, I'm honestly trying to remember exactly when they dated. I think it was like around that time, 2015, 2016, maybe. Um, so a while ago, he's a DJ obviously. And he wrote, or he, he put out this song featuring Rihanna. And at the time, It was written by this person. I can't even remember what the pseudonym was. I'm actually going to look it up right now um, because it is Taylor Swift's, um, uh, this is Taylor Swift's like, I don't know, alter ego or something or like her um, pseudonym for when she writes, yes, Nils Sojberg. That's, I'm not probably saying that right, but it's... um, it's, I think, like a Swedish name. Um, but so I, I, at the time, it was written by this per- person that we all thought was just like a Swedish writer. Well, turns out it was a pseudonym for Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift actually wrote the song with Calvin Harris. Um, and it was a big song at the time, you know, huge thing. Now, obviously, Taylor and Calvin broke up. They um, broke up pretty quickly after this song was put out. Okay, I'm I'm actually looking now. It came out April 2016, and they broke up like a month later, um, which is kind of crazy. But their breakup was kind of messy. Like, I felt like, well, obviously, there's a lot of rumors that like Taylor left Calvin for Tom Hiddleston, that there was maybe some overlap there with their relationship. Calvin at the time, like, tweeted some things that were a little shady. It just, it didn't seem... Like they ended on super, super good terms. And Taylor has never really acknowledged the song. She's never talked about it. She's never played it. Like it's just not really something that she really talks about until she performed it in Liverpool during the surprise songs. And she even said when she, but before she performed it, she's like, we may do things that are pretty surprising, that are pretty unexpected. And I'm honestly, I'm, I, I, I am honestly surprised that she's saying it because even though, yes, she wrote the song, so she has every right to perform it because she's a writer on the song. It's still kind of surprising because of her relationship with Calvin. And this makes me think that obviously I have no idea where her and Calvin stand right now. I have no idea like how they feel about each other, if they're in contact, if they're friendly, whatever. But it does make me think that like, okay, they're probably on pretty good terms because otherwise I don't think she would perform this song. So anyway, if you got to see her perform this song live, you are pretty lucky because I feel like it's kind of once in a lifetime. And then the mashup with Gold Rush, which I love Gold Rush. uh, Very, very fun. And then she did a a, uh, mashup of The Great War and You're Losing Me. Very sad. (laughs) Both pretty, pretty sad, tough songs, but both very good songs. Um, And then on her final night, in Liverpool, she did Nobody No Crime with a little bit of Carolina, a song that she wrote 
for the movie where the crawdads are. Is that is is that what the movie is called? Uh, where the crawdads sing. Where the crawdads are. Where the where the crawdads sing. And then she did a um, kind of a mashup of the manuscript, which people were surprised that she performed that like in the middle of of the tour. I think a lot of people thought she would save it for like the very 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 last show. Um, with some elements of red. So those were the surprise songs she performed in Liverpool. Let me know which which night you'd rather be at, night two or, or night three. I feel like I would, just for the this is what you came for, I think I'd rather be at night two. Um, but again, both great, both great nights, both great songs. Um, okay, Joe Allen breaking his silence about his relationship with Taylor Swift. So he was featured like cover star and like the feature story in the Sunday Times, which is a UK magazine publication. Um, He's promoting a new movie that's coming out this summer. And we all know Joe is very private. He doesn't talk about his personal life. He basically never acknowledged Taylor Swift publicly when they were together. But he was asked about the breakup. And this is what he had to say. I would hope that anyone and everyone can empathize and understand the difficulties that come with the end of a long, loving, fully committed relationship of over six and a half years. That is a hard thing to navigate. What is unusual and abnormal in this this situation is that one week later, it's suddenly in the public domain and the outside world is able to weigh in. Now, this quote's interesting because obviously Taylor and Joe, their relationship but their breakup was announced like in April-ish of 2023. And I think at the time, and even still now, a lot of people felt like had they been broken up for a while prior to their breakup being announced. And I think there were people that felt like, yeah, they probably broke up even before like her tour started. And which would honestly like, it it wouldn't have surprised me that was true. Like it wouldn't have shocked me if they'd waited a while to publicly announce their breakup. But according to Joe's quote, it sounds like they broke up and then a week later it was announced. So it sounds like they probably broke up in like April, um, which is a little surprising to me. But I also feel like, and this is me just totally speculating on their relationship. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But I do feel like they were probably at a point where like they're, they have been strained for a while and like not officially broken up. But I feel like they probably were like not doing so well for a while prior or yeah, before they actually decided to officially break up. Joe then talked about kind of briefly, because I feel like there's been this narrative that's come up and, you know, Taylor has kind of said stuff too, to sort of uh, confirm this narrative. But basically like everyone feels like Joe was the reason the relationship was so private. Joe was the reason, Joe was the reason. And like Taylor, I mean, she's alluded to like being locked up, being in jail, like there's all these references that she's made to this idea. She she even said something in the Time magazine profile that they did of her last year. Like, you know, I was like locked away or I was, you know, kind of hidden for all, all of these years. And like, those are years that I can never get back again. But Joe in this profile basically says like, this was a decision we made together to be private. Like this wasn't just a me thing. So this was his exact quote. As everyone knows, we together, both of us mutually decided to keep the more private details of our relationship private. It was never something to commodify, and I see no reason to change that now. So what he's basically saying is, we both made this decision, and we both chose this. And I think that is true to an extent. Like, I, I've said this before. I feel like when Joe and Taylor got together, Taylor was so burned. She felt so burned by, like, the public and, like, her celebrity. She was not, like, she was not in the... I feel like people didn't really like her at that time. Obviously, this is post the Kim Kardashian, Kanye West stuff. And I think she did want to be in a very private relationship. And I think when they got together, that was true. Like she did want to not talk about her personal life. She didn't want people having opinions. But I I feel like over time that shifted. And that's obviously when relationships break down is when like you two people start in the same place. And then as time progresses, they actually kind of move apart and their opinions or feelings change. And I kind of feel like that's where where Taylor and Joe ended up. Obviously my own opinion speculation, but that's kind of what I was thinking about them. So that was Joe's take on the relationship on on the breakup. I don't think we'll probably get anything else from Joe regarding Taylor Swift, but um, 
yeah, obviously she's moved on, you know, she's in a happy, healthy relationship now. So I think we can kind of put the Joe Alwyn time to bed. Um, And then I just wanted to touch on, I saw over the weekend, Brittany Mahomes, obviously the wife of Patrick Mahomes, share on Instagram stories that she's packing for a four-week trip. Now, obviously I have no idea where she's going. She didn't tell me personally, but I do feel like we are just a few days, weeks away from Brittany and Patrick joining Taylor and Travis on the Eras Tour. And I'm just predicting it right now that we're going to get Brittany and Patrick at um, the Eras Tour very, very soon. And I wouldn't even be surprised if we get a little couples vacay, Brittany and Patrick, Taylor and Travis doing some fun stuff together, uh, maybe during like the off time of the Eras Tour. Just putting it out there in case it comes true. And then you all will know that I said it here first. <laughs> Um, all right. That's that for today's show. As always, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, follow us on social media and we will see you guys next time. Bye.